Your Excellency, welcome back to Uganda. Yes, I'm very pleased. I'm indeed even overwhelmed to come here, to be here with you. Now, first of all, what prompted you to come back to Uganda? Oh, that, that decision was mine and mine only. I made it independently. And secondly, I didn't like to come here when you are in a campaign for, presidential, for the president. I didn't like to, fight, to be involved in any kind of political activity. So I chose to come after the elections. For quite a long time, you've been, you had showed a lot of interest in coming back to Uganda. I, I'm not referring to the, 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 the immediate past, yeah. but for, the, for about maybe three or four years, you were interested in coming. Yes, I, I, I sort of used to think about it, think about returning to the country. But as you might have read in the newspapers, I was a sick man for some time. I had all kinds of complaints which come due to old age. This is why I couldn't fulfill what I wanted to do. But now I'm full of life, as you see me. Your Excellency, you don't seem to change, and you, are, you look like, uh, like as you looked in about 15 years or back. Uh, so what were you doing as a professional man? As a professional man, I was practicing mainly immigration law in New York City. And uh, I used also, from time to time, to visit schools and colleges to lecture on Africa. In other words, you had your own chambers? Yes, I did. I did. Now, um, you came here in 1986 and you yes. embraced the, the movement system. Yes. Then all of a sudden you decided to go back. What prompted you to go back? Well, I, I embraced the, uh, the movement system because, I, as you may remember, I was one of the architects of the concept of a movement. People standing for election on their own merit and not through the machinations or manipulations of a political party. You see, this is, this, there was no disagreement between me and the movement people. And uh, I did not leave the country because of that. I left the country for personal, merely personal reasons. Maybe we would like to hear those personal, if they are not very personal, but in the interest of the country. But, in, uh, but they, they've, they've be, they, will, they would be of no interest at all to the country as a whole as a country, as a state, because I didn't, leave, I didn't leave this country because of problems with the state of Uganda. I left this country because of my own personal reasons. That's why I cannot, at uh, this meeting, disclose all the reasons. Well, as, as a professional man, you're living comfortably, a very good salary in, in America, you know, a good environment, and all of a sudden you decide to come back to a third world country, yes. which is probably not up to your standards. Really, there must be some... Wh what's it? No, because you might, you should note, or you should understand, that in spite of having been away for a long time, I've never, I never applied to be an American citizen. I've always remained a Ugandan all my life and I intend ending my life as a Ugandan. This is why the question of being in a, a different, a highly developed country has no interest for me. I'm interested in being a citizen, whether the country is third world or fourth world or fifth world, that doesn't, doesn't matter. What matters is where my personal, my natural in instincts and interests lie. And that is Uganda. What kind of critique did you have for President Museveni and his movement? No, not so much. Not so much. I think, I think if one wanted to describe them, it's, uh, I may use my, my school motto of Budo, King's College Budo, and that is to say, in English, it translates, so little done, so much to do. In Luganda, it's Gachi Alimabaga. Yes. So now let's flash back a bit. What happened to the umbrella? Of course, it became popular in Uganda and people embraced it. Yes. Then all of a sudden people said it was torn. Yes, it was torn. I was not the person who was tearing it to pieces. You remember the late Oito Jok? He was, he was one of the main, uh, main people who tore the umbrella to pieces. And I used to spend, to, to waste a lot of midnight oil trying to repair it. You remember that? Yeah, that's right. Yes. And this is why, I'm, but in any case, when I left, I think the government is running on the principles of that umbrella. Why didn't you try to mend it? I couldn't. They wouldn't allow me. Oito Jok, you see what I did when Oito Jok 
became so adamant, I transferred him to, to be an ambassador to Algeria, and his reply was to remove me from office. Do you still subscribe the movement type of government? Oh, yes. I, but I think there's something to be done, something ought to be done to amend it. But I do subscribe because, you see, I, I'm sick and tired of all these uh, conflicts in Africa, which arise sometimes with, uh, because of so many political parties. I don't like Uganda to be like Italy, you know, with so many government every two years or every one year. I don't like that. Yeah, and then let's hear it from the whole mouth. Uh, what exactly happened to your government? For the first time, you know, we'd like to hear it from the my, whole mouth. My own government? Yes. My own government was undermined by those people who didn't like to work together, by those people who wanted power for power's sake, by those people, like military men like Oyito Jok, who never read the Constitution, because the reason why I'm saying that is that the president of Uganda, according to that Constitution, and I think according to the new Constitution, he is the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. So he, didn't, he disobeyed lawful orders. See, because he was all the time trying to become president, maybe. If you people had allowed him to be, he would have become president. You know that. Who were your buddies and what happened to them, some of your buddies? Some of my buddies? Yes. Everybody was my buddy. Well, because this was close buddies of yours. Well, but they didn't have a chance. We didn't have a chance. I mean, because, you see, we had no guns. We had no guns to fight anybody. And, Who uh, are they? Who are those buddies? Well, I, I would take the army chief of staff. He was first and foremost one of those who disliked me so badly, so much. He spent, I understand that when I escaped from Uganda, he spent about two weeks looking for me because I escaped with my wife and my daughter who was only four years old. He was wondering how on earth I could escape with so many people. You had plans, a two million pound sterling plan to, to bring mercenaries to fight Obote. What happened to the plan? No, that's an allegation which is completely wrong yes. and I think I'd, I should take this opportunity of repudiating every single word of that allegation. I never planned. I never planned to overthrow. I mean, I never planned a one-man coup. It would have been a one-man coup, one man who is the president trying to overthrow his own government. I mean, that's unthinkable. I think my, my education ordains that I couldn't do that. So who do you think were spreading the rumors? Those people who were distracting me, these are the people who were even uh, instigating the army to shoot every night, to, you know, to, to cause so much problem. I mean, you remember they even shot de dead Dr. Barlow of Malago. They killed so many people without my knowledge. I was resting in Entebbe State House, and they used to come to, to carry out all these outrageous acts of, of, uh, of crime, uh, of uh, criminal behavior, without my knowledge. Now you are back home. What do you plan to do? If the president of Uganda, Museveni, gave you uh, a, a political appointment, would you take it out? What kind of appointment? I mean, uh, I, 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 I think I'm too old to, uh, to take up to... Maybe you're above the, the, the appointment because you have been a president. No, I, I'm never above. You remember in Af American history, for instance, uh, Adams, Quincy Adams, was, I think, the third president. But he, he left, and when he left... He, I think he was appointed minister, uh, Secretary of State and something else, and he went back as an ordinary backbencher in Congress. I mean, being, having been something else, because this Uganda is a republic. Uganda is not a monarchy. There's nobody who is entitled to be a kind of hereditary ruler in this country. You know it yourself. Right. So you would you take up the appointment? Well, if I'm, if I'm fit, I can take up but any appointment. I could man? take up any appointment, I could be a backbencher in Congress, I mean in uh, Parliament. You would, you would stand for Parliament? I could, I could stand. If uh, the, but, uh, the president were to, uh, to ask me, I mean, he's the head of the movement. You How see? about going to legal practice? No, I'm too old for that, I think. I can't argue with all these very smart young lawyers who I've heard are very 
Some of them are very well, good. The legal profession uh, respects the old age. Yes, but then you, lo- you tend to lose, with age you tend to lose memory. And you see, the law is something which requires you to have a very sharp memory to remember case law, you see. I don't think I'm very good at that anymore. I used to. Well, then you are referred to as a QC. Is it yes. Ch- Queen's Chambers or yes. Queen's yes. Council? Yes. What exactly does it mean? It means uh, that you are a senior member of the bar who is fit and capable to persuade Her Majesty the Queen of England to appoint you as one of her Queen's Council. You are part of the Queen's Council. I was at the time because Uganda was then a, a, a protectorate of Britain. We didn't have independence, but now today... I don't think uh, you can be a Queen's Council in Uganda anymore. Yes. Okay, now you are back home and uh, you're trying to, cl- to claim your properties yes, back, but your properties are, are being, you know, have been taken over by squatters. How do you plan to go about yeah, it? In Insambia? Tell me, is that so? Well, in Insambia, there are so many true. squatters. If it is true, I'm going to take steps to see that they're either evicted or I evict them or I pay them compensation according to the law of Uganda. But I intend reclaiming back what is mine because I earned it. I bought all that property from the money I was earning before, ever, before I ever became attorney general, when I was still in private practice, you remember? Yeah, yeah from 1957 to 1962. Well, you, in, in, after the overthrow of your government, you are detained for 12 months. Tell us exactly, did they mistreat you while you are in detention? No, it's not a question of being mistreated, but it's a question of uh, disturbing me and denying me my liberty as a free man, as a man who is governed under the fundamental law of Uganda, the Constitution. And you remember, in that Constitution of 1962, like the Constitution of today, human rights, the fundamental human rights, of the right of assembly, the right of spe- the free- freedom of speech, assembly, association, and others were entrenched clauses. So they never passed a law to disentrench them. So this is why I was bitter to be, tra- to be detained, and this is why I had to escape, because I had detained without money, without anything except the place where I was uh, sleeping. So they detained me in Tebe in a, in a private house. Eight long months de- being detained as a head of state. I mean, this is a real, it was a real shame on the government and of an independent African state because, you see, they, they had to keep their prestige, but they didn't keep it in this case because I was detained. Let me ask you about the rebels who are trying to, to, to fight the Museveni government. Yeah. What, what do you think of them? Well, they are rebels. We've got, we've got Konyi, we've got Konyi, we've got uh, well, yeah. the ADF. You have, you, have ex- you have described them. You call them rebels. You see? Yeah, rebels. They could be rebels with cause or rebels without cause. Yes, but you see, the, you see the, the whole spirit of Uganda today, I think, should be aimed at peace. First and foremost, I think that's the top priority, peace. You remember Pope Paul VI said one day that peace, I think, is a new word for development. Because without peace, you cannot develop. You remember that? And without peace, you cannot even be civilized or educated. You remember Louis, King Louis of uh, King Louis XIV, I think, he said, you have to have ple- leisure to be civilized. You see, we, don't ha- we have this. And now this is what uh, I think President Seven is trying to build, so that people are peaceful, then he can develop them. And this is why I think it's, uh, it's very fundamental. Do you, what do you think of Idia, of Museven himself as a man? Oh, well, I think, I mean, you know that. I mean, this thing speaks for itself. He, he's, a, he's a freedom fighter. He was, because of his ideas, because of what he believed in, he was forced to go to the bush to fight it out, you see, for freedom. But then you've got to remember that also he's a human being. He's not, he's not a god. So he, whatever mistakes he has made, he has made them in the course of his duty to, twi- to fulfill some of his b- re- dreams which sent him to the bush. So I, I think he's done a good job. A few things have to be said. So, However, that he's got to bring peace to this country. 
That's my main criticism, peace. And he's taking steps to do that. I mean, he's pulling out of the Congo, as you have heard, as I heard when I was still in America. He's pulling out of the Congo, and that will make this whole area, sub-Saharan Africa, a more peaceful place. He's also got a role to play in West Africa. He's got to join those forces that are trying to bring about peace in Sierra Leone, in Guinea, in Nigeria, and also in other countries like, uh, what's the other country? Uh, Ethiopia, I mean uh, Somalia, uh, Sudan, uh, Eritrea, and all these places. Would you, would, you, would you join hands with him to try to bring peace in this region? Oh, yes, sure. What but, kind of contribution? Well, the, well the, the kind of contribution is through you, the media, to try and appeal to the people, to tell them from my experience in America and in Britain, they cannot go forward unless they are at peace with one another. And no government plans of development can ever, can ever, pro, I mean, can ever yield any kind of benefits unless the country is peaceful and unless even the, con the continent, you know, sub-Saharan Africa has got too many conflicts, armed conflicts. This should be stopped. All of us, including me, we should take part in this. And I'm prepared to play my part. Because I know whatever we say about economy, about I uh, World Bank, about IMF, nothing will ever come to any kind of solution to solve our problems unless we're peaceful. And unless the whole of our area, our region, and entirely, I mean, uh, certainly, the whole area of sub-Saharan sub Africa. Since you arrived, any surprises? And, oh, yes, plenty. First of all, I'm surprised at the development that has taken place at Entebbe International Airport. I'm surprised at uh, the rate of development. I noticed as I was coming to what, driving to Kampala that uh, perhaps the intention is to have one city, Kampala and Entebbe, join together. And I also noticed that quite a number of developments. I understand, I haven't been there yet, but I understand that on the eastern side, Mukono is going to be, become part of Kampala. So these are huge developments uh, that must have, on, on which a lot of money has been spent. But I still contend that we could, with peace and development, we could get rid of the IMF because I, I'm worried about the debt the IMF debt and the World Bank debt. Yeah, but we can't do without the World Bank and the IMF. Oh, we can. Oh, we can. Because remember, I, I am much older than you. I was alive and kicking. Yeah, but then the economy was very good. No, no, no. Before independence, before independence, you know what used to happen? We never had the World Bank. We never had IMF. All that the colonial governor at Entebbe used to get are uh, instructions from London, from the colonial office, saying that they were not going to send him any money to balance the budget of Uganda. Yeah, but, but then the, 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 the people were very few. The economy was, the, the, the international economy was growing. Uganda's economy was growing. No. So certainly you can't keep the, I mean, no. compare the situation. No. Because, you see, because, you see, the reason why, why you interrupted him a bit, but the dispatches from London used to say that tell the natives to grow more cotton, to grow more coffee, to balance the budget. But what I'm saying to you today, if Uganda were to develop all her cash crops, we could get rid of everybody. We could. But the thing is, people are not working hard enough. We have plenty of land. You know it yourself, but... And look at the conditions the World Bank gives us and the IMF. You see? But that can be negotiated. What I'm trying to to do is to highlight, you, you have asked me, I'm only highlighting the problems. I'm not trying to say that I, I've got all the answers. I have no panacea to cure all the problems. Okay. But I've got ideas. That's right. Yeah. Okay, fine. You talk about debts. We, we, we heard in the media in the past that you, you had some debts back home and you wanted government to settle, help them settle them you know, that as a condition to come back. Let, let's hear it from the whole smart thing. Oh, yeah, first of all, I got to dispel the idea that I ever got, gave conditions to the government. Never. I made a request. I think I'm entitled, every citizen, 
can make a request to his government. That's what I did. I, 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 I sustained these debts because of my medical condition. I think you saw that, all that in the papers. It was exposed. I was a sick man, and uh, I, I sustained debts, medical debts, medical bills. But then, as you say now, I'm a former president. I think I was entitled to medical, medicals, free medicals. This is why I, I, wrote, I wrote to ask for assistance. I never laid down any conditions. I came on my own free will. It was not the Uganda government which paid my air ticket. You know that. It's, therefore, nobody can turn around me and say that it was the government because of the conditionalities I set as conditions for my return that I'm here. No, no. I only made a request. I don't deny that, but I think I'm entitled. Everybody is entitled to make a request, yeah? as long as it's not, it's not an order. I'm not in a position to order anyone. Yeah. Finally, uh, would it offend you if I referred to you as Your Excellency, or it's your, 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 your right to be referred to as Your Excellency? No, I don't think I say right. I don't think I, I owe any kind of right, because this is not a hereditary st kingdom or empire or whatever. This is a republic. There are two things here. We are a democracy and we are a republic. You see? That's the main guiding principle. And all these titles uh, within that has to have to be used within that context, knowing every, every day, every time, that we are a republic and that we are a democracy. Would you accept to go to Makere and try to teach our young men and women who are aspiring for knowledge? Certainly. Those are the kind of things I, I got to consider. But I got to consider them from a number of perspectives, you see? from the conditions if offers were to be given to me. Yeah. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you.